Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, most churches assume that what their church teaches, most people, most Christians, they assume that what their church teaches comes from the Bible. But yet Jesus said, the very first thing he warned in Matthew 24, take heed that no one deceive you. Amen? Because he said, many will come in my name. And they'll say, I'm the Christ. Now, that doesn't mean that people are going to come and say, hey, look at me. I'm Christ Jesus. Or I'm the Messiah. Many would come claiming, acknowledging that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is Christ. Yet Jesus said they would deceive many. The Apostle Paul went out teaching uh, churches, founding churches, establishing new churches. And he came upon the Bereans. And he said, these people were noble. They were much more noble than those in Thessalonica. For they searched the scriptures daily to see if what we told them was true. You see. And that's what we're supposed to do. Is search the scriptures daily. Listen. It doesn't, you know, our faith is based upon nothing if it's not based upon the truth. Now, is that right or wrong? People have always worshipped imaginary gods. Well, my God wouldn't do that. Well, my God is this way. Well, my God, well, he would never send anybody to hell. Well, see, you can, you can make up a God in your own mind. But you know what? It doesn't change the fact that there is a God who changes not, who is the same yesterday, today, and will be the same tomorrow. His judgments are true. His judgments are right. And they're going to take place at the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. So it doesn't matter what we get into our minds or what we convince ourselves of. You know, I, I've met people that they rewrite history. And rather than call them a liar, sometimes I was saying, you know, I think you're, you're afflicted with selective amnesia. You select what you want to recall as the truth or what really happened and what didn't. You see, you have selective amnesia. Well, I can't recall that. Well, that's because, you know, if you happen to recall it, it might convict your heart. Amen. Now, I want to talk today about the appointed times of the Lord. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 4 that God is looking for true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, we can't worship God unless we worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, Jesus said, and perhaps we'll turn there, Mark chapter 7. I like the account a little bit better in Matthew chapter 15, where he condemns replacing the commandments of God with the traditions of men. And Jesus said, you know, in vain do you worship me. And he says, why? Your worship is in vain. Because you're worshiping me according to the traditions of men rather than the commandments of God. You replace the commandments of God with the traditions of men. Now, that, to the human mind, it doesn't make sense. To the human mind, we think, well, as long as we have a good heart, as long as, first of all, we don't have a good heart. Jeremiah chapter 17 says the heart is deceitful among all, everything else, and who can understand it? The heart deceives people all the time. A heart is no good, a conscience is no good unless it's educated by the Word of God. Some people say, well, I'll let my conscience, I'm going to follow my conscience. Let me tell you something, that sick priest who cut the beating heart out of a sacrifice and lifted it high didn't, didn't have any problem sleeping at night. You hear what I'm saying? His conscience did not bother him at all because his conscience wasn't educated by the word of the living God. You see, his conscience was, was educated by paganism 
and the culture that he lived in. So he didn't feel at all. People that worship Mary and the Catholic Church, they're not, they're not, they feel like they're doing the right thing. But it's still a tradition of man. It's still idolatry. But they feel like they're doing the right thing. Their conscience would bother them if they didn't do it. You see, because her conscience is not educated by God's Word. We're the people of God. Let me tell you something. This is the church of Jesus Christ. A lot of people, they don't like the way the church is. Well, I don't like that. Well, then leave. That's what I say. If you don't like it, you don't belong in it. That's what I say. And that's a fact. Is that right or wrong? You're not going to change the church that Jesus gave his life to build. Jesus is the head. You and I will never be the head, and neither will anybody else. Jesus will always be the head, and I'm going to submit to him. And somebody that comes along and says, well, I wish, the church was, I wish the church was like this. I wish Apostle Paul hadn't said that. I, thought, I wish, listen, that's contrary to the living God. That's being anti-Christ. That's exalting yourself just like Satan did above that of God, saying that your opinion is better than God's. God is outdated. Well, that was written for way back then. You know what Jude said? He said, contend earnestly for the faith once and for all delivered. That's the pure faith. This is not. That's the faith that is pure and untainted by the world. This is a faith, and, we, and we're stained too by the world. But we're saying, God, show us where we're standing and, and clean us up and get, us, get it out. Amen? That's what we're saying. I want you to turn with me over to Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the appointed times of the Lord. Genesis chapter 1, the creation chapter of the Bible. Uh, we'll begin over in verse 13. There was evening and there was morning, a third day. Then God said, notice, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day and the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Now listen to that. What do we find that these lights are for? The sun and the, the moon and even the stars. They're for signs. Look, they're not just out there. They're out there to declare the glory of God. You know, David said the heavens declare the glory of God. And the heavens also even reveal the plan of God. But notice here. Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day and the night. Now, of course, those lights are the sun and the moon that separate the day and the night here on earth. And let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. You know what the word seasons there is in Hebrew? Moed, M-O-E-D, Moed. You know what the official definition of that word in Hebrew is? Appointed times. Fixed festivals. God set those, the sun and the moon, as signs 